Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll be speaking on the role of horticulture and forestry for sustainable food production in the future. Of course, this is the campus of the University of Horticulture and Forestry at Solon in Himachal Pradesh. And uh, our mandate is to work on apple, plum, pear, apricot, and then, of course, you have uh, juicy berries and uh, highly nutritious walnuts, areca nuts, and the like. The major fruit in India is undoubtedly mango. But that's very seasonal. You only get it for three, two to three months in a year. And then we have to depend on mango juice. But then apple is one fruit which we get year around and is so balanced in nutrition we like to say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And uh, apple production in uh, India is confined to the Himalayan region. Of course, the area under apple is much more and so is the total production but the productivity is highest in Himachal Pradesh. And then, of course, some apple is also produced in, actually it is not UK, it is Uttarakhand, okay? That's not United Kingdom. And then someone said some, some apple is produced in AP, and it's Arunachal Pradesh, not Andhra Pradesh, again, a clarification. And then, of course, in the other states. But now, the university of, uh, this horticulture university at Solon has produced some uh, low chilling apple varieties that have been successfully cultivated and have borne fruit in Karnataka and they will also be suitable to slightly mid hills in uh, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Anything which is two and a half thousand to three and a half thousand feet, you can grow an apple variety called Anna or Hariman. Um, well, what you see from this slide is that any, anywhere between 1950 to 1980s, there was a geometric increase in the population growth and so was the increase of, in our total food production. But after about 1980s, we only had a marginal increase in the total food production while the population continues to grow. So that's a major challenge before us to keep, to keep pace with the growing population to have a food security. And a uh, lot of food, is lost due to damage by insect pests, diseases, drought, and the fruit crops are not exception. If you see over in this slide, anywhere between nine to 10% of the total food produced is lost due to insect and disease diseases, but much more is lost due to the post-harvest losses because we are not able to collect, package, market, and or process the excess produce that we have in the major growing regions. Uh, in addition, the one of the major factors that is that will challenge both uh, the fruit production and the forestry is the climate change. In 1970s, apple in Himachal was produced at a height of around 5,000 feet to about seven, seven and a half thousand feet. Today, this range has increased from about 6,000 feet to about nine and a half thousand feet because of the rise in temperatures and we can no longer grow apple at a height of four and a half to five thousand feet where the university is located. So that's a big danger for the fruit production. Uh, to cope up with this uh, climate change, we have extended periods of drought. So what the university has done is to develop a series of wa water harvesting, water conservation, and water utilization schemes. So we suggest to farmers to develop a series of tanks along the store, along the slope so that you collect, harvest, the, collect all the water and then that water continue to recharge the soil profile and or you have a polythene or cement lining and then can, you can use that small amounts of water for drip irrigation and or sprinkler irrigation for to cultivate vegetables, flowers and the like. Uh, maybe I am entomologist so I will not feel satisfied unless I mention about insects that are a major challenge to the fruit production. This is a woolly apple aphid in uh, 
apple and this is a leaf disease called apple blotch in apple which can completely kill the trees so we have to continuously be vigilant to protect the trees and have a continued uh, production then we also get the hail storms which can damage the fruits very badly and if you go to the himachal pradesh at a height of around 6 to 7000 feet you will find mountains and mountains covered with these uh, nylon nets this is to prevent the hail storm injury to the apple fruit that you consume over here um and then orchard management uh, is very important to increase the fruit production now the university has come out with the high density planting systems earlier one tree to another tree distance will be used to be around 20 25 meters now we can plant these trees at a distance of around 1 1.5 to 2 meters have high density planting we can have easy picking picking up of the fruits packaging and then marketing of the same uh then the university has developed some of the dwarf fruit stocks on which you can grow these uh, some of these temperate fruits both in apple pear peach plum and of course cherry and these ha- are now being spread on a large scale to increase the productivity we can also use the biotech interventions to have increase improve either the quality of fruit or to have early bearing for example many of the temperate fruits will produce fruit after about 5 to 7 years of planting the crop now with the genetic interventions you can have uh, one year old uh, plum trees that are bearing the fruits or you can pr- pl- produce the fruits that are without a stone or without a kernel so that you can process it very easily for juice making you can also have some early flowering induced in plum that within one year not on it which is actually a tree which can be 10 to 15 feet high that plum you can reduce to about 2 to 2 and a half feet and you can have the plum fruits <coughs> plum fruits on that tree within one year of its uh, age uh, then one important thing for the fruit production is to improve the pollination for good fruit set and manage pollination by honey bees can increase the fruit set and the fruit weight by about 20 to 25%. So this kind of intervention should also be thought of in the tropical fruits what it can do. The university also focuses on uh, vegetable production which is also grouped in the horticulture group and has developed several high yielding varieties over the years that have spread not only in Himachal Pradesh but in the adjoining states of Punjab, Haryana and Jammu and Kashmir and uh, more emphasis is being given to the producing the hybrid crops hybrid says the mating of the two distantly not unrelated but two lines that are not similar to each other then you exploit the heterosis that can in- improve the productivity anywhere from around 24 or 21 to 41 percent so that's why you talk of hybrid cabbage hybrid cauliflower and uh, every other crop uh then one of the important thing in fruit and vegetable production is that when the crop matures you have a glut in the market or you have a large amounts of produce that rots on the farmers fields right and that's where the farmers suffer the losses one of the important thing for the planners to see and the farmers association to do is to have fruit drying fruit or vegetable drying and or processing units small scale units that are based in the areas where you have the produce because these fruits and vegetables are produced in bulk amounts right 80% of that is simply water it's only about 15 to 20% which is the dry matter so we must have so the university has developed these uh, solar dryers which you can put in each of the villages that you can dry your uh, vegetables and fruits and then these are sold on a premium into the in both national and the international market so this kind of intervention is very important to keep the sustainability of proper production system and to have high production high levels of uh, productivity another intervention in the hilly areas and has been has taken up in the plains as well is the floriculture in the net houses so many many villages in himachal around solan and simla are simply called a chrysanthemum village or a carnation village and this has added to the incomes of the farmers because of the decrease in the size of the holdings and limited water supply 
the protected or the high tech cultivation of flowers is one avenue that is open to the farmers and that's where you can see either chrysanthemum carnations and the roses that are being cultivated by farmers you come to solon go in an area about 50 to 100 kilometers and you find thousands of these poly houses that are producing these flowers which come to the markets in delhi or in many other metropolitan cities and big amounts are exported to the outside countries as well and uh, another avocation which the farmers particularly those landless holders can go is mushroom cultivation the mid hills are very suitable for uh, producing mushrooms which are consumed in high amounts into the five star hotels and the high class society and this is the solon is actually called the mushroom city of india where the university is located and that's where much of this technology was developed and we also have the directorate of mushroom research located in solon Chambagat, where i studied 40 years back and uh, another avocation with us to diversify the agriculture production is production of aromatic and medicinal plants so this is also one of the mandates of the university some of these plants are only grown in the temperate regions anywhere at a height of 5000 to about 10000 feet high and many of these plants have the vertical disease creative properties for which we, we don't have any synthetic compounds we have to depend much of the ayurvedic system depends on the plant extracts that are derived from these uh, medicinal plants and the university is engaged in developing technologies that is given to the farmers and to the industry for large scale production of these uh, medicinal plants and uh, what we have done over the years is we have uh, destroyed the jungles we have converted the mountain slopes into farmlands where we grow maize and wheat and this is the situation in much of the Himalayas right from Arunachal Pradesh to Sikkim, Uttarakhand, Himachal and GNK you grow these crops on the terraces so there is no forest cover left and that's what is impacting our environment so what we have to do is to devise systems then that can integrate both uh, the forest trees and at the same time meet the growing needs of the farmers we can go to the agroforestry the university is engaged in producing fast growing agroforestry trees which can either produce timber and or fodder for the cattle for the integrated farming systems and so we recently had uh, demonstrated to the ch our chief minister a salix plant which has grown 10 feet in about 8 months and you know what is salix used for many people here don't know this is used for producing cricket bats so that that's what creates another avenue for the farmers so that's what we can we are propagating we multiply and sell seeds saplings both of these forest trees and also those of the temperate fruits to the farmers to diversify the farming systems and increase their incomes and uh, finally thank you in uh, 2019 we will have here an international congress of plant protection right in hyderabad and all of you are invited and this is being uh, this is being coordinated by ICRISET in collaboration with the crop protection societies in india and i will be the chair of this congress thank you very much have a nice day